Good afternoon, Year 4. Welcome to Reading with Pleasure with Mrs D. I'm joined by two other Donnelly residents today. This is Baby Sheep and this is Mummy Sheep and I'll talk to you about them in my story after this. I've got my cup of tea ready in my stag mug today. Are you all sitting comfortably? Let's begin. A new beginning. We don't see Mac for two days. When he returns, he doesn't talk about Stella. Mac says he is anxious to teach Ruby some new tricks. He says the billboard is bringing in more visitors. He says it's time for a new beginning. All afternoon and into the evening, Mac works with Ruby. Ruby's feet are looped with rope so that she cannot run. A heavy chain hangs off her neck. Mac shows her Stella's ball, her pedestal, her stool. He introduces her to Snickers. When Ruby obeys Mac, he gives her a cube of sugar or a bit of dried apple. When she doesn't, he yells and kicks at the sawdust. When George and Julia arrive, Mac is still training Ruby. Julia sits on a bench and watches them. She draws a little, but mostly she keeps her eye on Ruby. Bob watches too. He's hiding in the corner of my domain under knot tag. It's raining outside and Bob does not like his feet getting wet. Ruby trudges behind Mac, her trunk drooping. Endlessly, they circle the ring. Sometimes Mac slaps her flank with his hand. Suddenly, Ruby jerks to a stop. Mac pulls on the chain hard, but Ruby refuses to move. <clears throat> Come on, Ruby. Mac is almost pleading. What's your problem? She's exhausted, I tell myself. That's the problem. Mac groans, idiot elephant. Idiot human, Bob mutters. Walk Ruby, I say, although I know she's too far away to hear me. Do what he says. Walk, Mac commands. Now, Ruby doesn't walk. She plops her rump on the sawdust floor. I think maybe she's tired, Julia says. Mac wipes his forehead with the back of his arm. Yeah, I know, we're all tired. He pushes Ruby with the heel of his boot. She ignores him. <clears throat> George looks over from the food court, where he's wiping off tables. Mac, he yells, maybe you should call it a day. All close up. Mac yanks Ruby's chain. She's anchored like a tree trunk. He pulls harder and falls to his knees. That does it, Mac says. He brushes sawdust off his jeans. I'm through playing around with you. Mac stomps off to his office. He's carrying a long stick. The gleaming hook on its end is almost beautiful, like a sliver of moon. It's a claw stick. Mac pokes Ruby with the sharp point. Not hard, just a touch. I can tell he wants to see how much it's going to hurt. I growl low in my throat. Ruby doesn't budge. She's grey, unmoving like a boulder. She closes her eyes, and for a moment I wonder if she might have fallen asleep. I'm warning you, Mac says. He breathes out and stares. Ruby makes a huffing sound. Fine, Mac says. You want to play it that way? He draws back the claw stick. No, Julia cries. I'm not going to hurt her, Mac says. I just want to get her attention. Bob snarls. Mac swings. The hook slices the air just a few inches above Ruby's head. See why you don't want to mess around with me, Mac says. He draws back the claw stick again. Now, move! Ruby jerks her head, flinging her trunk towards Mac. She makes a noise that sends the sawdust scattering. It makes my glass shiver. It's the most beautiful, mad noise I have ever heard. Ruby's trunk slaps into Mac. I don't see exactly when she strikes him. Somewhere below his stomach, I think. I know he must be uncomfortable because Mac drops the claw stick and falls down on the ground and curls into a ball and howls like a baby. Direct hit, Bob said. Mac groans. He stumbles to his feet and hobbles off towards his office. Ruby watches him leave. I can't read her expression. Is she afraid? Is she relieved? Proud? 
When Mac is gone, George and Julia lead Ruby from the ring. It's okay, baby. It's okay, Julia says. I'm going to leave that today and I will see you in a few minutes for the story of the sheep. Bye-bye.